The next thing we need to talk about um, in our discussion of the node voltage method for solving circuits is how do we handle a voltage source in between two nodes. Um, when that happens, uh, we have this, we, we call it a supernode, and we have a, a neat little trick for solving that. So let me show you um, an example. Suppose we have a circuit with resistors and a voltage source in between these two nodes here. I'll put another resistor here. Okay, so suppose we have a circuit like this. I'm going to say this is plus minus. Let's let this be our source voltage 1, and let's let this be our source voltage 2. Um, you guys know from the steps of the node voltage method is the first thing was we go through and we label all the nodes, V1, V2, and then we use KCL to write equations for the currents, all the currents at all the nodes. We designate our reference node. Um, if we have a current coming in here to this node, um, I can label this I1. We're going to have a current that takes a path down this resistor. I'll call this I2. Um, we're going to have a current that goes this way. I'll call this I3. Um, a current that goes down, I4. And then a current that takes this path through the last resistor. I'll call this I5. Now, um, as I mentioned before, you don't have to be too concerned with the direction of your currents. Um, especially if you're not really sure about this one, you just kind of put them in, we make our KCL equations, and then when we solve for our currents, if you get a negative solution for a current, then you just know that the current is actually going the other way, opposite the direction of the arrow that you wrote. So um, don't get tripped up over making sure that the arrows are going the correct direction. But one thing that is new is we have this um, VS2 source in between nodes V1 and V2. So how do we handle this? Um, so the way we do this is just like when we were doing superposition, we're going to kind of turn off this source for a little while. Um, and when we did superposition, when we removed a voltage source, we replaced it with just a wire. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to, just for a moment, replace the S2 with a wire. And so our circuit becomes this. So now I have, I still have my V1 and my V2. Um, I'm not going to change my nodes because I know these are actually different nodes because there is a voltage source in between. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pretend that it's not there while I'm making my KCL equations, okay? So we replace VS2 with a wire while writing KCL equations at each node, at each node, so KCL equations, there we go. Okay, great, so then once you have all your KCL equations, um, ours would be that I1 comes in, I2 comes out, this I3 is actually going to be split amongst I4 and I5. I3, I4, I5. So our KCL equations for this particular example would be um, I1 comes into V1, and then we have I2 coming out. We have I3, which is split between I4 and I5. So I can just replace that I3 with I4 plus I5. So there's my KCL equation. I took out this source that was between the node um, in order to write this equation. Now um, the next step in um, the node voltage process is I'm going to rewrite all of these current equations in terms of V and R. So that's my, those are going to be my node voltage equations. And um, the way I would do that is this is VS1. This would be Vs1 minus V1 over the resistor between, I'll call that R1, is equal to V1 over R2 plus I4 is going to be V2 over R3, I'll let this be R4, plus I5 is also V2 divided by R4. Alright, so check this out. I still have V1 and V2 in my equation. 
because I do have two nodes. So just be careful when you do um, when you replace this source with a wire at this super node, we still want to keep V1 and V2 separate. So V1 is still this node um, that's connected to this R2 resistor. V2 is still this node that's connected to these resistors. So keep those explicitly separated, even though it's kind of connected by a wire, but we're just sort of pretending for a moment. So once we've done our pretending, we have our node voltage equation. Now um, we're going to come up with this, I'll say, um, at the super node. At the super node, we have that um, this, the difference between these two nodes is going to be the value of this voltage source here. So um, just to keep with my convention of following the direction of my current, I'm going to have that V1 minus V2 is going to be negative Vs2. And it's negative because as the current travels this way, it's entering this source through the negative terminal of this um, power source here. So at the super node, I have that V1 minus V2 is equal to negative Vs2. Now, um, assuming that we have um, all of these values ahead of time, right? We know what this source voltage is, we know what this source voltage is, then we can just um, come up, this is just going to be a constant like 10 volts or something like that. Now we have a way that V1 and V2 are related that we can make a substitution into this equation to solve for V1 and V2. So that is the general process for how to handle a super node. Um, in the next video I'll show you um, a specific example so that you can see how the computation works.